Hey the bookmarks and bookworms, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Bookmas. What is Bookmas I hear you ask? Well it is the typical vlogmas that happens on YouTube but I am adding a bookish twist on it so Bookmas. So every other day in December I will be posting a book related video and of course I live in Bali and so the backdrops will all be so very similar to this this is actually the temple opposite my house so this is the kind of porch of my house and then we have the place that i normally film and then this kind of giant temple behind me so yes there should be lots of balinese backdrops throughout the course of december too so without further ado let's roll the new bookmas intro Bookmas Day 1 is all about my December TBR and the five books that I want to read by the end of the year. So this first book has been inspired by Hannah May who mentioned it in a video recently. This is The Premonitions Bureau and this is a piece of non-fiction so a step away from my usual diet of literary fiction and stepping into the paranormal because this book is all about people who have had premonitions of major disasters in the world like for example the Aberfan disaster. And so we follow a man called John Barker who sets up the Premonitions Bureau in the 1960s with the aim to potentially find warning signs that could help prevent or lessen, I guess, such huge disasters happening in the future. Now switching to a piece of French literature, Valérie Perrin already blew me away with her novel Freshwater for Flowers that I read back in August. This is another one by her, this is Forgotten on Sunday, and it's actually her newest release, it was released only this year. This one is about a young woman who works at a care home and it's playing with the themes that Perrin normally likes to play around with, like memory, secrets of the past and loss. Now those are obviously very heavy themes, but Valerie Perrin's prose tends to toe the line between melancholy and humour. It's not all doom and gloom and so uh, I really enjoy her, her writing as a result. I think it's very well thought through and intelligent but also very evocative and emotional. So yeah, it's the perfect, it's the perfect writing for me. Next up is Strange Sally Diamond and this recommendation came from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, otherwise known as Scott. And when Scott rates a book as highly as this one, you have to just sit up and take note because I have had so many great book recommendations from Scott over the years. This is also a piece of Irish fiction and Irish fiction generally suits me and suits my reading taste. So this one sounds like a bit of a strange one. I mean, <laughs> Strange Sally Diamond, but it the, the blurb reminds me so much of Eleanor Oliphant and that we have an not a social but person, but somebody who doesn't necessarily understand uh, normal social uh, rules and etiquette because uh, we start off the book, and this is not a spoiler if it's on the blurb, we start off the book with Sally having deposited her dead father's body, who died of you know natural causes, she hasn't killed him, um, she deposits his body and puts him out with the trash and then she kind of sets fire to it because they live on a rural farm and so how they deal with trash is that they uh, set fire to it, incinerate it, they have an incinerator and so she takes her dad at his word and literally puts him out with the trash and then sets the trash and her father on fire. As you can probably tell that is going to be quite the page turner quite engaging and gripping I think. I think it is a thriller-ish but I think I'm hoping that the psychological layers are going to be meaningful because and I think hearing Scott they will be because otherwise I don't want the abnormality I guess of this young woman. I don't necessarily want it to be treated in a way that that is just okay she's just like this like I'd like it to be explained and I'd like it to be meaningful um, and I don't want it to be there just as a gimmick I think that's the word I think I don't want it to be a gimmick because that's not fun for me to read I don't want to kind of just laugh at somebody who's 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 different that's that is really um, that would make me really uncomfortable so I think that um, but I trust Scott and Scott would never be suggesting a book that would treat its characters in that way and so I think that 
there will be something else going on underneath and it will all come together beautifully and be written lovely so yeah I'm, I have high hopes for this one. <laughs> now this next book that's on my TBR for December is more of a completionist thing. I am a bit of a completionist. I like to really round round off a job well and so by completing Bourneville which is the next book on this list I will have read or DNF'd all of my net galleys which are advanced reader copies for 2023 so that will leave me with a fresh slate for 2024 net galleys to come through and I can pick them up straight away as I go so that is really really great so the story of Bourneville is told through four different generations within one family living in Bourneville which for any of you who don't know is the uh, chocolate town in the UK near Birmingham and was the site of Cadbury Chocolate Factory and it, it brought in a ton of work and wealth to the area as well as a lot of social change because housing was provided for the workers, uh, leisure facilities were provided for the workers, sporting was emphasised and uh, churches were set up because I believe Cadbury was a Quaker and so the religious element and the no alcohol and the sports and keeping everybody fit and well so they could work in the factories was all part of his uh, work ethos. But this was pretty revolutionary at the time for the area that he was working in because uh, typically in Birmingham you would have poor sanitation, back-to-back -back housing, no gardens um, and so the fact that this new housing model had gardens and and good sanitation and the workers were well cared for and paid and sporting events were a regular occurrence it really was at the time a very forward thinking and nurturing thing to do for his community even though obviously he is also gaining from that because he then has healthy loyal workers to support his company growth but I digress slightly by explaining the context to those of you who didn't know. But um, the book itself, though, uh, does go from the when the chocolate factory opens all the way through to, I think, the COVID pandemic and recent times. So I am very much hoping for a sweeping family epic. Uh, we're crossing four different generations. So what I'm hoping that's probably about 100 years, give or take. I have not heard very many people speak about this book at all. It kind of, I think, has flown under the radar, so I'll be interested to see if that is for a reason or if I should be shouting about this book from the rooftop. So I guess you will see <laughs> early next year. If it's not, if I'm not talking about it, then maybe it's a bit of a flop. <laughs> and then lastly, I wanted to end the year with one of my favourite authors. This is coming from Susan Abuwala, and this is The Blue Between Sky and Water. Similarly to Bourneville, the story is being told through four generations. This is a piece of war fiction and historical fiction, but in typical Abuwala style, this focuses on survival and strength of women. Susan Abuwala is my favourite author for a reason. She provides great characters, great emotional depth, great writing. She delivers every time, and I cannot say that about a lot of authors that I enjoy, and so I am just so pleased to be ending the year with what I imagine is going to be an excellent reading experience. So that is Bookmas Day 1 complete everybody. Bookmas Day 2 will be coming out the day after tomorrow and that will be my November wrap up for my members and then the next video out after that will be Bookmas number 3 which will be going through my 2024 anticipated releases. So definitely bring a paper and pen for that video because I have got some juicy gems of books that are being released next year for you. Have a great week guys, happy reading and I shall see you very soon on my next one. Bye! Christmas is waiting for you Eleven stars in the fairies of